Aristotle is often regarded as the first scientist as well. Um, in his observations, when it comes to the natural world, what were some examples of order that you're speaking about now that Aristotle encountered that really illustrates, again, this, this model of an ordered universe? Yeah. Well, Catherine, one of the interesting things about Aristotle's whole view is he was both kind of philosopher and scientist at the time. They didn't really make a distinction between that. Mm -hmm. He was interested in understanding everything. And given his interest, I'd say, most of all, on coming to the higher things, that made him very interested in what we might call the lower things, because he always saw hierarchy. And when you see hierarchy, that doesn't take away from the lower things. It just puts them in their place mm -hmm. in the whole. So part of the reason he was so interested in studying very closely the things that you and I would associate with, say, physics right. or biology, is because he had this conviction that all of these things are showing forth the causes that are behind them. So ultimately, he does say, I'd rather know a little bit of the higher things than a whole lot about the lower things. Yeah. But to come to that knowledge of the higher things, he was all about studying those lower ones. So I'll give you an example. You asked yeah. for an example. And here really comes the, uh, the aspect of order. When he asked the great question, does nature act for an end? This is recalled the issue of teleology, which comes mm -hmm. from the Greek word that means end or order to the end. So he's saying, does nature act for an end? An example he loves to bring up is the structure of teeth in animals. Hmm. And so he just says, look at the mouth of an animal. Look at the structure of the teeth. Let's just say the fox. He doesn't choose a particular animal and say, though recognized, if we just see it, one thing that's obviously true about it is the way the teeth of a fox are arranged is absolutely perfect for its eating, for its eating indeed exactly what it needs. So we ask the question, is this accidental? Hmm. Did this just happen to happen? Or was this somehow purposive? Right? Is there an order to an end there? And, uh, it, and, and obviously there he's pointing in the direction of clearly there's some kind of, you, can, you could use this word, kind of a design. There has to be some kind of ultimate intellect behind it because there's such an order in the mouth. You could just say an order among the teeth, then expand that out. That order itself is connected to a certain order of how the fox lives. So there's just a, a little yeah. angle into that. And again, just one example of the fox, but you see that repeated with all the different animals. You you, you do <laughs> indeed. And, and, and you could go to something like, you know, the, the shape of the leaf of the oak tree. Right? I mean, just get in there into the minute detail. It's perfectly suited to what the oak does. Let's just, you can just right. go on and on.